What is up, YouTube? Robbie Vapes back again, and today we are talking about the STL Wolf by Kim Sun with the parent company Kimri. First of all, and first and foremost, if you only watch one part of this video, let it be this. Do not buy this product. This product is completely unsafe, all right? Now, if you don't wanna watch the rest of this video, and you're probably wondering why it's so long, because that's really the only point that needs to be made is do not buy this product. The rest of this video is going to be explaining why you shouldn't buy this product. So if you're happy with just knowing, hey, Robbie said don't buy it, I'm not gonna buy it, then that's fine. You can turn off the video right now, no big deal. But if you wanna hear why I'm saying this and why it's gotten to me so much that a company would actually have the balls to do what they did, then stay tuned. All right, so for anyone still with us who wants to know why I'm so worked up about this device, I gotta tell you, there's so many reasons. Before we get to that, I just wanna show you the device really quickly. Here it is. There's a the little device, a little pen starter kit. To give you a size comparison, this is the Inokin T18 beside it, the Endura. There you go, you can see it right beside each other, They're pretty much lined up level. You can see that the Inokin is a little bit taller than this. This is a shorter style pen, a little bit fatter of course, but other than that, um, very similar in size, meant to be that compact style. And uh, here's the packaging, just so you guys know what to stay away from. There it is right down there. Hopefully you can see that, get a good zoom in on that one. Um, so again, I'm honestly I'm blown away by how negligible their customer service was and how ignorant they have been to vaping community. Here's my story. What I'll basically do, I, I'm gonna bring up the email here later on that uh, I sent them and I'll read off the email that they replied back to me. And I'll also have a picture or a, basically a screenshot of the email at the end of this video, just so you guys can see it. You can pause it to read it out in full uh, if you wanted to do that as well. So that'll be at the end of the video. But in the meantime, I'm gonna talk about this device in general. What is the STL Wolf? Well, it's a straight to lung hit device. And it's in the shape of a starter pen. And that's kind of why I have my Endura out right now. Honestly, in my personal recommendation, the starter kit of 2015 has to go to the Endura by Inokin. This is honestly a great starter kit. If you're looking to get off cigarettes, this is the way to do it. This will give you that mouth to lung action or that cigarette action you're all used to. And it looks like this. Really nice, very clean, very simple, super easy to use. Uh, my battery's actually dying because I've been using it all day, uh, every day actually since I got it, but that's beside the point. Um, but the point is, this is start. This is a starter kit, the Inokin Endura T18. This is a death trap, the STL Wolf by Kim Sun. Yes, it is that negligible to the point where they have no regard for us as vapors and for our own safety. Now here's the thing guys, I'm a pretty nice guy, I'm a pretty level-headed guy, so when I got the product, and I'd already seen a ton of reviews out on this, um, most of them bad, some of them a little bit misguided, but I'll get to that later on. Um, when I saw the reviews for it and I got this product sent to me, you know, my immediate reaction was, you know what, I'm not gonna join in on this bash fest, I'm not gonna sit here and you know, belittle a company. What I'm gonna do instead, because obviously it, as a vapor, my goal is to see advancement in the industry, not to see it be taken a few steps back or to have this huge argument going back and forth or anything like that. So what I wanted to do was I wanted to give them the benefit of the doubt just saying, you know, it, putting together an email that basically said, um, and I'm just gonna summarize it here just really quickly, but I'll pull up their actual response to this, but it basically just said, look, honestly, I'm not gonna do a review on this. I've seen the reviews other people have put out. I've seen the product firsthand. I've had a chance to play around with it a little bit. And personally, I don't feel safe vaping this device. It's just not for me. Um, and I don't think anyone should be vaping this. I wanted to give you, you know, I basically said I wanted to provide you with a list of reasons why people shouldn't be vaping it. And then I went off to mention the fact that it's a nickel coil on a powered device. Um, and the fact that nickel does produce toxic fumes. And the fact that the device actually exceeds uh, the safe amount of temperature that a nickel coil should burn at. Um, and of course, uh, if you haven't seen it, there's a ton of videos out there of people dry burning the cotton and having it actually, you know, start to smoke and produce vapors, which are obviously not from the juice from the cotton and the nickel coil itself, which can be considered toxic or poisonous to us. Um, so after seeing all that, I put together that email, sent it off to them, and I want to read you their response. I 
just let me get it up here for a second. We'll uh, cut out real quick and I'll get it back up on my phone and I'll read it out to you guys. All right guys, I have it on my phone. Please excuse me from looking away from the screen for a second, but I just want to read this out. And I have to admit, it started out pretty good and when I first saw the response, I was very happy with it or the first initial line of the response. And then I got into reading the rest of it and you'll see why in a second. Hi Robbie, thanks for your constructive feedback. We respect your review attitude. You are exactly the kind of reviewers we have been looking for. Awesome, so it means they're gonna do something about this and they're gonna act on it and they're gonna change the model up so it's more safe. But it gets better, so here it goes. Here are my responses to your concerns about STL Wolf TC. Regarding STL Wolf temperature control function, the heating coil of STL Wolf is made of Ni200, which we know. And by the way, it's not labeled on the packaging, it's not labeled on the coils themselves, it just says temperature control in the packaging, which really could mean anything, um, because there are different wires that can use temperature control. Does that mean that the device is capable of, of handling nickel coils if you have them? And if so, how does it regulate it? I mean, things like that just leads to a bunch of questions, but going back to this email here real, real quick. Um, so the heating coil of the STL Wolf is made of Ni200. Its resistance would be dynamic as the surface temperature changes, and the chipset inside the STL Wolf batteries section would be able to automatically monitor the resistances change and adjust the power output to keep the temperature consistency of each puff. I don't really know how you put a chip in here. I'd love to crack this thing open and see what the hell they're talking about, but I cannot see a chip being in here that can control that, and there's already been enough tests done to prove that that is not the case. Not to mention the wording they put in there. Um, I just want to read this one wording out really quickly. Uh, inside STL Wolf battery section would be able to automatically monitor the resistances change and adjust power output. Would? You mean it does? Not would. Would is not very reassuring for me. Um, but anyways, I'll let it pass, okay? Going on from there, um, the dry burn prevention is a totally different feature and we suspect this intentional misconception was from other competitors. So you're basically saying that the competitors who are preventing the coils from burning in temperature control mode are all out to get you because they're doing a different feature than you are? So your feature is to instead burn the cotton and burn the can or the wire, the nickel, to produce nickel poisoning, and you're saying that it's just a different feature? No, that's an unsafe c component of your device. It's not a different feature. Let's get that right right now, okay? That is not a different feature. That is a totally different story. Anyways, moving on before we get too worked up here, okay? Regarding STL, STL Wolf safety doubt, Kimson will add Ni200 to STL, pack, STL Wolf package, uh, include manual, outer case, and caution card, and the instruction will teach users to use the product correctly. Well, that would be great, but the problem is the device doesn't work. It doesn't have to do with you labeling it anymore. We're past that stage. We know you're fucking with us with Ni200. What we don't want to do is have it burn and produce nickel poisoning. It's, it's not about the labeling anymore. The labeling was a small part of it, don't get me wrong. But the fact that it doesn't work is so much bigger than that, okay? Moving on from there though, typically users must fill the e-liquid to the new coil tank and wait five minutes before vaping. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll let that pass, okay, that's fair. Some people might prime their coils. If you want to wait five minutes, let it all soak in. Sure, that's fair. Even if without viewing instruction, they knows that the mods need to work with e-liquid and will filling before vaping. Sure, I agree. It is common knowledge for people to fill up their tanks before they vape. Sure, we'll go on to that. Okay. Suppose a user is new entry user and this guy do not read manual. Let's be honest, I don't read a lot of manuals as you've seen from some of my videos. So yeah, it doesn't have to be a new user. It could be me as well. Um, anyways, just vape and dry fire the tank. So this is someone who didn't read the, the manual, didn't realize they have to fill it up with juice, didn't realize they have to prime the coil or anything, and instead what they're saying is um, this guy, uh, sorry, just vape and dry fire the tank. So they just went in and started dry firing the tank because that's what they thought. They didn't know you needed juice for it. It's a one-off exception, but okay. Um, anyways, so their response to that is, do not worry. The cotton will be burned when the coil reaches 150 degrees Celsius, while SCL STL Wolf coil will reach 250 Celsius within one second. So you're saying that cotton burns at 150, but your device will reach 250 within a second. 
you're basically igniting the cotton then. That's not a feature. That's, that's terrible. But you don't want to do that. Anyways, guys, um, and again, I don't know Celsius compared to Fahrenheit, but we all know what temperature cotton burns at Fahrenheit. Um, so I'll, I'll skip that, but Celsius, sure. Um, I'm Canadian. I don't even use Celsius on my device. So I use Fahrenheit. That's just, I don't know, maybe it comes to my reptile background, using Fahrenheit to me measure temperatures in, the, in their enclosures and things like that. But off topic again, moving on. So, with it, uh, then this guy will stop vaping immediately. So, they're saying that in order to teach people that you need to fill it with liquid, we're just going to burn the hell out of your mouth and your lungs with nickel and cotton saying, hey, idiot, you're not doing something right. That's, that's, that's school of hard knocks right there. That's a hard way to learn, but that's what you want to do? Okay. Uh, suppose a user who can, uh, sorry, yep, I'm, I'm in the right place. Suppose a user who, user who cannot smell the burnt, do not worry. STL Wolf carries automatically constant temperature control system. The max temperature is 600 degrees Fahrenheit. Huh. That's interesting because we've actually seen a lot of these tests on other videos where they have proven it has gone well above that 600 degrees Fahrenheit mark. So I'm curious where they're getting this number from. Just saying. Suppose a user get a bad coil. Do not worry. STL Wolf have eight seconds of vaping protection function. If you're hitting on a coil for eight seconds, shit, I feel bad for you. Eight seconds on a, oh shit, I can't even do that on a good coil, let alone a bad coil. Who's gonna take a dry hit for eight seconds? I wanna meet that guy. If you're the guy who can take a dry hit for eight seconds, please don't do it on a nickel coil. But if you're the guy who can do it uh, who can do a dry hit for eight seconds straight, I need to meet you right now. Let me know. Anyways, moving on here. And again, that doesn't cover the fact that it's a nickel coil burning for eight seconds. It doesn't, I mean, at eight seconds, what's the difference between two or three seconds and eight seconds to that point? You're still inhaling bad stuff. All right, moving on from here. Um, users, oh, so if they've been vaping for eight seconds, users will notice that it stopped on them uh, and stopped vaping immediately. Okay, that's a good hint. It took them eight seconds to realize that shit, but fair enough. Suppose a user got a bad coil and continually vape the STL Wolf till NI200 wires burnt to red, 482 degrees Celsius, 900 degrees Fahrenheit in brackets, which is funny because they just said it doesn't go past 600. And now they're saying, suppose they burn it to 900? You're just contradicting yourself of what you just said in the previous statement. Anyways, I want to read this, okay. Suppose a user got, get a bad coil and continually vape the STL Wolf till NI200 wires burnt to red, 482 degrees Celsius, 900 degrees Fahrenheit. Then this guy will feel a very hot vape to mouth and stop vaping. Well, I'd hope they would. If you're fucking vaping at 900 degrees Fahrenheit and you don't realize it and you don't stop, something's wrong with you. Seriously, go to a doctor right now. There is something wrong with you. Anyways, um, according to Google, this is my favorite. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. Okay, I'm not even going to cut that out. Fuck it. <laughs> according to Google, because the internet is not known to lie. Oh, God. According to Google, NI200 is stable and safe under 1,000 degrees Celsius. Celsius. So they just went from 900 degrees Fahrenheit. Now they're talking about under 1,000 degrees Celsius, and they put in brackets, 1,832 degrees Fahrenheit. Users will easily feel such a high temperature. Well, no shit. Like, <laughs> you guys, like, you're telling me, first you start out by saying, this stops at 600 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, fair enough. You know what, maybe there's a misfunction, maybe something went wrong, maybe we're testing them wrong, fine. But then you go on to say, well then, if you reach 900 degrees Fahrenheit, then you should stop vaping. But you just said it stopped at 600. And now you're saying, according to Google, <laughs> according to Google, NI200 is stable and safe under 1,000 degrees Celsius, 1,832 degrees Fahrenheit. Users will easily feel such high temperature. Um, and uh, just to top it all off, uh, and here is a link of STL Wolf lab temperature control testing. Please kindly take a look, and uh, I'll post that link in the description if you guys want to see it. Um, and judge for yourself, maybe I'm being too harsh, maybe I'm 
perfectly in my right to uh, say this, but I'll post that link down below and uh, you can see for yourself. I don't know. Maybe all the reviewers are wrong. Maybe we're all, we've all been doing something wrong, but uh, yeah, I'll post it down in the link below for you guys. Um, regarding your other concerns, and I did have a couple other concerns, because I was trying to be constructive and give them feedback. It wasn't just the fact that it was deadly. Um, I also tried to provide actual product feedback. Um, so for example, here's the thing guys, they say, you know, you're, you're stupid if you start vaping, you know, a dry coil, but I don't know if you can see that here, but hopefully you can see it. I, I can't even see it in the camera. Okay. I think that's it. Yeah. So right up there where my finger is, that's the juice slot and there's one on each side. As you can see, it is very difficult to tell what kind of juice is in there or how much juice you have left. I actually put a pink juice in there just to prove a point because this is like my brightest juice I have and it's, I mean, it shows up, you know it's in there. And this is a pink juice in there. You can kind of see it hopefully, um, but that's a bright pink juice. You start going to clear juice or something that's not as, as colored as say this one is, you're not gonna be able to see when it's dry because you can't see through these two little slits on the on either side, right? Because it's little small windows. And uh, so I provided them feedback saying, you know, look, you know, some other things you might wanna improve on. I'd open up the windows a little bit more so you could see into it better. Um, I'd also, uh, what else did I say? Um, oh, and then of course on top of that, so not only do you have these small windows, the juice capacity on this tank is super small. It's kind of like the uh, um, the Delta II, if you guys remember that one, had a, had the small slits in it, but it was also very, the chimney covered most of the actual tank itself. So you just basically fill it around the outside. That's what this one does as well. So you fill it around the outside, it just fills up really quickly. Um, so you can tell you're gonna go through juice really quickly if you actually did use this, which again, do not use it. Um, but I provide them with that feedback as well in case they did wanna change some things, um, things like that. So there was a bunch of things. And then, uh, you know, the response to my other concerns were we, we will release some new products in January, which will have bigger juice windows and uh, top fill as well, which I also mentioned, you know, you should just to, you know, stay on par with the rest of the competition. You'll probably wanna do top fill. Um, I have no personal hate against bottom fill, but I figured I'd, provide them with that kind of option. Um, if you could finish through, so here's the best part, okay? After saying that I, I would not review this product, here's what they responded to at the very end. If you could finish the review this time, we would be more than happy to send you our other new products for your reviewing then. Um, and I did not mess up my words, that's how they put it, but, so if I do this review, they're gonna send me more products, which I don't want, okay? I don't want any more products from them because I am terrified of them and uh, for obvious reasons. So I'm putting out this review, obviously. This is barely a review. I feel terrible because I don't like bashing a company, but as you saw, I provided them ample opportunity to correct themselves and to try and you know make good with us uh, as, as the reviewers, and they had no interest in that. They're just full of excuses. They're full of, uh, you know, full of, them, of their shit. They're, I don't know, they're, f fuck it, just, I can't even finish that sentence because I can't even finish the thought process around that. I'm still hung up on this product. Um, do we really have to do a pros and cons now? Um, the cons, it could kill you. I think that's a big enough con to mention. Um, the pros, uh, it came with the USB cable, so that was kind of cool. I'm kind of scared to use it because I don't know if I trust it as much as I trust the mod. So, uh, but that's I guess that's pro, it came with the USB cable. Um, Packaging's kind of nice, which is actually kind of a con because the packaging is actually really nice. I'm not gonna lie, guys. I, I kind of like this packaging. Very simple, very sleek. It's got the little wolf on the bottom. Um, if honestly, if I saw this in a store, I'd go out and buy it um, just for the packaging. If I was a new new to vaping, hadn't seen any reviews on this, I would go out and buy it. And that's a scary thought. That is a scary thought that this their packaging is on point. There's no question about it. Um, but yeah, I, I do not buy this. Please do not go out and buy it, despite the packaging looking so cool. Um, it's not good. It's not good, guys. Anyways, um, so yeah, what I'll do is post the copy of the email kind of in the uh, air just at the end of this video here and uh, so you guys can see it. But um, let me just make sure actually. Okay, I, sorry, I just wanted to make sure. I, I work in corporate or in a corporate environment, so I know in, in our emails we actually put that they cannot be, um, or this, this email is only for the viewing intent of the person recipient to it. So um, if they would have put that on there, I couldn't share it with you, obviously, but uh, they didn't. So that is good. Legally, I'm allowed to share that with you then. Uh, apart from that, I mean, the STL Wolf, uh, what more is there to say? I think I covered it. 
Um, I don't even, I mean, we're not doing a down and dirty section, guys. I'm sorry if you stuck around this long to hope for a down and dirty section. I'm not gonna do a dry burn test. It doesn't work, let's face it. There's no point in doing a dry burn test like everyone else has. Uh, chances are, if you watch this video, you've already watched 10 of these other ones, and that's how you found out about it, and you're just hooked on the whole bash fest right now, which, again, I didn't want to do this video. I really didn't want to do this video, and the response to email, it pretty much sickened me, and I had to, I had to put this together. Um, and not to mention they encouraged me to, so I hope this works for you guys, Kim Sun. Um, I hope this is what you wanted. I really wish you would have responded in a different tone, in a much more um, liable tone, knowing that you are liable for people's well-being in this industry. And as a manufacturer, you should not be putting out devices that your research comes from Google. Um, and I guess, of course, like I said, if you want to watch that video, I'll hop in the description below. But yeah, um, that's going to end it here, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, like I said, after uh, I vape us out, I'll have a copy of the email just for you guys to kind of browse through, peruse if you will. Uh, pause the video there if you want to read it. And um, that does it for today. So, thank you all for watching. Make sure to uh, not buy an STL Wolf. And I guess that ends it there. So, thanks again guys. Let's end it on the same note we usually do. So. Thanks for watching YouTube. As always, happy vaping.